Hi, I'm Deborah Michaels with DAA, and I'm here today with Melinda Bikini from the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation. And we're going to talk with Melinda about her work with the foundation and um, a little bit about the patients that she serves. So, good morning okay. and welcome. Good morning, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, Melinda is a patient scholar at the DIA 2019 annual meeting. So, Melinda, um, you're with the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the patients that you serve with that? Sure. So, um, the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation serves the patients with Colangio Carcinoma. Uh, Colangio Carcinoma is a, a rare cancer of the bile duct. And so we sh serve the patients um, all over the world. We're an international uh, patient advocacy organization, foundation. And we also serve the doctors, the researchers, and um, all those who are involved in cholangiocarcinoma treatment and research. Okay. Well, what is cholangiocarcinoma? Um, before I met you, I really had never even heard of it. <laughs> sure. Not the easiest thing in the world <laughs> to say either. So cholangiocarcinoma, like I said, is a rare cancer. It's usually... Um, the statistics right now say is diagnosed in about three out of 100,000 uh, patients every year in the U.S. Um, it's a cancer of the bile ducts, so it can originate in the bile ducts inside the liver, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, or in the bile ducts outside of the liver, extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Right now, there is no proven treatment for it. The only chance for a potential cure is to be able to have um, a liver resection, but unfortunately most patients are diagnosed in too late of a stage to be able to have that. And even if they are able to have a resection, the reoccurrence rate is quite high, about 75%. So right now it's a, it's a pretty dismal diagnosis, but the good news is, is there's hope. There's a lot of research being done right now. Mm -hmm. We have a high volume of targetable mutations for a GI cancer. So right now we have a lot of clinical trials going on in cholangiocarcinoma, so it's really exciting and gives us hope for the future. Oh, excellent. Well, before we talk a little bit maybe about some of those clinical trials and you know the kinds of things they're trying to, to investigate, how did you come to be interested in cholangiocarcinoma? So about almost 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Um, I did have a liver resection. They thought they had cleared margins, but three months later, it, it showed back up in my lungs, eventually spread back to my liver. Um, I was able to enter into a clinical trial two years after my diagnosis, um, and I've had great results. It was kind of a groundbreaking immunotherapy adoptive cell trial. So my own immune system has been fighting my cancer for the last seven years. So because of that, I started volunteering with the foundation. When I was first diagnosed, I had never heard of the disease before. So I Googled it like you, most people do but shouldn't, um, and found the foundation and reached out to their patient community. Um, it was really helpful to know that I wasn't alone and there, there were others out there. Um, and then seven years ago when I started having really good results, I just felt obligated to be able to pay it forward, so I started volunteering with the foundation. I came on as a discussion board moderator and just helped patients and caregivers all over kind of navigate the disease, um, find referrals, help with clinical trials and that kind of thing. And then two years ago, I came on as full-time staff as the advocacy coordinator. Okay, okay. And uh, what kind of work do you do in, in regards to advocacy for the foundation? Sure, so as an advocacy coordinator, I speak to patients and caregivers every day. I um, get all the phone calls, the emails of usually newly diagnosed patients who mm -hmm. just are seeking information and help. Um, so I help them with referrals to find experts in this disease, um, to look for second opinions, to um, reach out to the community to find support so they know they're not alone. Um, I also help coordinate, we have a research advocacy committee of almost 30 now, so we're helping to train these research advocates to understand this disease and the research process so that they can help with um, the patients and caregivers to facilitate the disease as well. Um, we do we do a little bit of everything. Um, we help with industry. We put on patient advisory boards. We um, give our input, bring our the patient's voice to the table with um, informed consent, with protocols, with all these new trials being done. So that's been really important, and it's I think really empowering for our patients and caregivers 
to be able to bring their voice to the table and then to actually see that people are listening and making changes because of that. So that's been a really good uh, process for us. Um, we started a care team, Kalanju Carcinoma Awareness Research and Education, and um, we're hoping to launch a couple more this year. And our end goal is to have care teams all over the world to bring awareness um, about research and education to Kalanju Carcinoma. Okay, and are you working primarily in the U.S. or do you work um, across the globe? So we are a virtual company with an international presence. So we're all over the U.S., okay. yes, but we definitely collaborate with, um, with institutions, with physicians, with researchers from all over the U.S. We have an Asian Pacific cholangiocarcinoma conference that we've been a part of for the last three years. Um, so definitely an international presence. Okay. Um, so the, the therapies that you're working with or the potential therapies in the, the clinical trials, um, what kind of what stage are they in? Are they like early clinical trials or have some of them been going on for years or? Yes, so it's super exciting, like I said. Um, so we have a lot of targeted therapies going on right now, targeting these mutations. Um, we have several that are coming into phase three trials, which is very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also research being done preclinical right now. Um, I would say the, the three things that the foundation focuses on is the patient advocacy, support, and education, mm -hmm. um, basic research, um, providing investigational grants. Um, the, for, we like to see young investigators apply for these grants and see them start their careers in Kalangio and take it forward. And then also the clinical research. We have the International Kalangio Carcinoma Research Network, which is comprised of more than 65 institutions from all over the world who are collaborating together to make the research for this disease move faster since it is a rare cancer. Okay. Is this um, disease, is it hard to diagnose? Are there um, any issues around um, uh, around that aspect of you know, finding care? And yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's a late stage diagnosis usually. Most patients have symptoms that might mimic gallbladder issues or um, some of the late diagnosis symptoms would be jaundice um, where all of a sudden they wake up one day and they're, they're jaundiced and they don't know why and they go in and find out they have a, a, a tumor obstructing their, their bile ducts. And so, yeah, unfortunately there is late diagnosis and we hopefully um, can find a way to, to, you know, to have that done earlier so that surgery can be done, resections can be done, and hopefully our prognosis is lengthened. Wow. Is there, is there any other information that you would want the, um, the community to know, either the healthcare practitioners, um, the people working in industry? I mean, is there some message that you would want to send? Well, sure. First of all, it's important to just bring awareness to cholangiocarcinoma, and I think it's really important for them to know that the foundation is out there and that we're available. I would love for every person who's diagnosed with this disease to be able to reach out to the foundation to get the support that they need and the education they need. It's so critical for patients to get a second opinion from someone who sees a high volume of these patients so that they know um, molecular profiling is so important for our patients because if they get that done, that can open doors to possible clinical trials or immunotherapies and give them more options um, down the road. You know, So it's, we push the molecular profiling right away. So for the physicians, especially in the community oncology setting, you know, to know that that's important to have it done right away for our patients. And just to know to send the patients to the foundation and also to send the physicians to the foundation. Every year we have a cholangiocarcinoma uh, annual conference. Um, 2020 will be our seventh annual conference. It's always in Salt Lake City. Okay. And last year we had almost 500 um, physicians, researchers, patients, and caregivers come together. And it's quite a unique conference because everybody sits at the table. And so collaboration can be done. Um, and, and people are coming from all over the world. So collaboration mm -hmm. can be done internationally. And a lot gets accomplished that week. And I always hear from industry and physicians and researchers that it's the most magnificent conference that they've ever been to because because of the, I think, the audience that we pull together. 
So yeah. that's what so I would tell them. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know I wish we had a little plaque that had your, your website on it, but do you want to just tell them what the um, how to get to your website? Sure. It's www.cholangiocarcinoma.org, O-R-G. Uh, cholangiocarcinoma is C-H-O-L-A-N-G-I-O. C-A-R-C-I-N-O-M-A. -I, -I, I hope I got that right. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yes. Um, so is there anything that you have um, have learned or any insights you've gained here at DIA 2019 that will help you in your work? Yes. Yeah, so um, this was my first time at DIA, and it was kind of a unique experience for me to see the other side of industry, I guess, to see... They're in the inside structure of how they work. And so it was a nice opportunity because a lot of time industry comes to our conference and gets to see, you know, what we're made of and how mm -hmm. we tick. And so I felt like this was our opportunity to see kind of how they work. Um, I really enjoyed the patient engagement tracks and to know that the industry companies are out there really working on um, providing good patient engagement with the communities, which is, which is very nice. So um, it's been a great learning experience. Well, we're very happy to have you here together with us at this conference, and um, it's great to be able to exchange information. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, the scholarship. It's been a great opportunity to be a patient scholar. Good to Our meet pleasure. you. Our <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Good to meet you, too. Thank you.